going on, Jerome's. So, I mean, we've had a couple of days to sort of digest what the hell happened with that Colts game. Greatest comeback in NFL history sort of is what it is. But what does this mean for the Vikings going forward? Well, number one, uh, so the Vikings had a big time emotional win in overtime against the Bills. And then the, the Cowboys game happened. Now, I, I don't expect that against the Giants. And the Vikings do need to keep on rolling and stay ahead of the Niners for the two seed, which is pretty important. But I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But it's Tell the Truth Monday, so we got 10. 10 uh, truths about the 2022 Vikings that we wanted to share. Number one, Saturday was the most fun game I've ever watched. Now, the second half. where I mean, to a degree, because when we did our... So, by the way, we sort of got called out when we did our ha- emergency halftime show because we're a little bit emo, like we're a little dour. Like, we, we weren't calling the team for Rawads, uh, although we did question if they're the worst 10-3 and team in NFL history. And it, it, it wasn't angry. It was just more, wow. And uh, paraphrasing, but we even said we want to see the second half just to see how bad it can get. But we also wanted to see in the second half if this team would have some fight and have some backbone and some character, and they certainly did. And, I mean, watching that second half, it was great because you had zero expectations. You did not expect the Vikings to win. Maybe Daddy bet the the, the Vikings live money line a little bit. Who knows? Who who, who really knows? Uh, But then just seeing it. Also, re-watching the game when you know what happens and then just seeing, oh, KJ, oh, Jefferson, oh, Kirky, oh, uh, the defense is getting stops, uh, oh, Duke Shelley, baby, 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 baby. Next up, number two, it shouldn't have had to be like that. It absolutely shouldn't have had where you dug yourself a damn hole and now you're able to get out of it, but you were at home, you had the division on the line, win and you secure it, and a 4-8-1 and one team who is led by a coach who coached high school football for two seconds a couple years ago, and you just got shellacked. Like, you couldn't do anything on offense in the first half. Defense was being put in bad spots. Special teams was garbaggio. Kirk threw a pick six. It was rough. It it was rough. It shouldn't have had to be like that, but, I mean, it turned out pretty okay. Uh, Number three, uh, O'Connell with a big test. So, like we mentioned, after the, the Bills game, super emotional, Kirko chains. Actually, no, that, that was the Patrick Peterson chains game. And a big-time win, that was a statement win. Because, you know, Buffalo, Buffalo's still damn good and doing it in their building, coming back from a 17-point deficit in the third quarter. And then you just got shellacked. You, you just got absolute waxed. We're going to need more wax by the Cowboys week 11. Now, the, the Vikings can't have a letdown uh, against the Giants, against the Packers, or the Bears. Oh, my. They have to refocus it. And hopefully they will take to heart the lessons that they learned from the Bills game and then turning that into the Cowboys game. Uh, Whereas, hey, we can't let up. Like, there's going to be emotional wins. We just secured the division, yes, but we can't rest on our laurels. We can't be all fat and happy. And it's just like when they get in the playoffs. Like, are are you not going to show up for the division round because you won a big-time game in the wild card? Or are you not going to show up for the NFC title game because of the divisional round, a la Minneapolis Miracle in 38-7? Or are you not going to show up for the Super Bowl because, like, oh, yeah, we had an amazing win in the NFC title game? No. No. Uh, so it's a big test for O'Connell uh, to really recalibrate his locker room and just get them ready and get their minds right uh, for Christmas Eve. Next up, number four, you can win a Super Bowl with this version of Kirk Cousins. You can. I mean, Kirk's been hanging in the pocket. He's slinging the ball all over the place. He's dropping some dimes, and he's not scared. He, he's absolutely not scared. Where uh, Kirk performed admirably in the in the Lions game it was a big reason why the Vikings were almost able to crawl back into that thing. And for the Colts game, I mean, it really was a whatever game. And I was waiting for its prime Kirk Cousins, like vintage Kirk Cousins, rather, where he was just racking up these garbage time stats. But all of a sudden, the Vikings got got back into the damn game. <laughs> and Kirk was an assassin. I mean, that the, the game tying, well, setting up for the game tying touchdown to Thielen and then also just getting it to Hawkins over the two-point conversion and then dropping a couple of great passes in overtime to set up the field goal. Kirk styled in. Kirk is playing some of the best football of his career. He is extremely clutch. He has seven fourth quarter come from behind uh, drives or game winning drives. And it's just amazing, man. Next up, number five, the defense amped up their aggression. Uh, Ed Dontel and company did pressure, Matt, or they did blitz. They sent an extra rusher on Matt Ryan, 40.5% of his dropbacks on Saturday. And that's exactly what they have to do. And uh, a part of it was the game plan. Like you saw in the first half that they were amping up their blitzing. They're playing a little bit more man. But 
in the second half, it turned into desperation because they had to get pressure. They had to try and do something. They had to be aggressive. They just couldn't sit back uh, in their shell and let Matt Ryan pick them apart or let uh, Zach Moss run on them. So in a weird way, we got the defense that we wanted because of piss poor situations. Now, hopefully O'Connell and Donatel and Petten see this as like, hey, that's the way we got to play defense no matter what the score is the rest of the season. And that's exactly what they have to do. Hopefully they take that to heart. Six, Vikings have weapons all over the field. So Jefferson obviously got his, you know, 12 for 123 and a touchdown. But, I mean, K.J. coming in with a career game. Uh, K.J. is the guy who never quit and really started to get the ball rolling in the second half. And then Thielen uh, catching some big-time cojones catches as well as uh, that last touchdown. And then Hawkinson getting the two-point conversion. Hawkinson getting a big-time catch, set up the game-winning field goal. C.J. Ham scored a touchdown. Dalvin Cook uh, with a 95 billion yard screen pass it's the only screen pass for the vikings that's gone for positive yardage this year i swear i swear also ezra cleveland you know watch the dalvin screenplay again and watch ezra cleveland just absolutely hustle his ass down there and, and get number four in the end zone it's awesome to see i love it number seven uh players uh, are not taking the north for granted and i i know a lot of people uh sort of say it's like oh well the eagles are wanting to win the conference and the vikings are fine winning the division blah, blah, blah. that's the first goal of every single team Win the, your division. Take care of your business and then go from there. Because guess what? You host a playoff game at minimum. Guess what? You can move up in the seedings. And then guess what? It could be home, home, home for you potentially in the playoffs. And the Vikings secure the two seed. If something weird happens at Philly, Super Bowl comes through Minneapolis. How crazy is that? But, I mean, the players, you heard Eric Kendricks get emotional talking about it's, it's it's been tough. It's been a while where, I mean, these guys have suffered, especially on the defense side of the ball, a couple of very lean years where they just simply were not getting it done. But now you secured the division and you are you feel comfortable with the leadership of O'Connell and Quasey. And the veteran players know. Like these opportunities don't come by very often. So now the guy strike while the iron is hot. Number eight, special teams need to step up. So last couple games, the, there's been a lot of coverage issues uh, as well as they, they let uh, the Colts bust that big kick return to start. Obviously had the block punt, which is no good. Uh, so, I mean, special teams, third phase, the guy gets something going. And, you know, teams aren't kicking to King Kenny anymore. I, I understand that. Jalen Rager would like to see him bust a punt return, which would be fantastic. Uh, and also the, just the coverage units. I mean, they need to get their stuff sutured up. You know, they can't get fooled by fakes uh, like they did in the Lions game. Uh, but, you know, Matt Daniels uh, overall has done phenomenal this year, but a little bit of a lag, a uh, little bit of a dip uh, as of late in the quality of special teams play. Number nine, got to peak at the right time. Uh, so the Vikings... You know, the question is, wh when are the Vikings really going to catch fire? Like, when are we finally going to see that complete game where the offense shows up and crushes, scores 30, 35 points, maybe even 40 points, drop a 40-burger. The defense is opportunistic. They get some take uh, takeaways. They get a couple sacks, and special teams is good to go. When do we see that? Hmm? We're still waiting for that game, but you got three regular season games left, and hopefully the Vikings put the bank thing on all three of them. Uh, finish 14 and three, would it be that that will secure the two seed because the Vikings uh, get it over the Niners no matter what if they win out, and and then you get into the playoffs and. If you're peaking at the right time, if your pass rush is getting after it, if you can cover someone actually, um, it's important. It's important. N lastly, number ten. This team does have some magic. Oh. There you go. Number 10. This team does have some magic. It, it really does. Where it, It's almost spooky when the Bills game was the second best game of, of the year. But no matter what happens, when the chips are down, I mean, this team with its back against the wall can just get still get after it. Like, knock them down seven times, they'll get up eight. That doesn't work, but it's okay. And offensively, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone. Uh, I think they have great leadership. I think Kevin O'Connell is a solid and competent game manager, uh, which is rare for a first-year head coach. Uh, and it, it just seems like no matter what team is put in front of you, besides the Eagles and the Cowboys and, and maybe the Lions, that the Vikings will have a chance. And whether the Vikings come in, blow the doors off the other team, we haven't seen it yet this year, but we'd love to see it uh, the rest of the way, especially in the playoffs, and are able to maintain that lead. Or if they get down, like until it hits triple zeros, the Vikings feel like they have a chance to win. 
and that makes them extremely, uh, extremely dangerous. But uh, that's it. That's 10 Truths About the Vikings. Tell the Truth Monday. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Most worth the work. Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.